43 past era, there could be political implications to the judge's decision in former President Trump's Georgia election interference case that either D.A. Fonnie Willis and her team or special prosecutor Nathan Wade must step aside in order for the case to continue. As the general election heats up, senior advisors to Trump tell NBC News the campaign is, quote, engineering a plan to make lemonade out of lemons as a full docket of court appearances are about to swamp his political calendar. Joining us now, Brendan Buck, former press secretary to John Boehner and Paul Ryan. He is also an MSNBC political analyst. Lonnie Chen, former policy advisor to Mitt Romney's campaign. He is a fellow at the Hoover Institution and an NBC News contributor and former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards from Maryland. She is also an MSNBC political analyst. So, Congresswoman, first I want to get your reaction to what we heard out of Georgia this morning. Well, you know, I think as the judge dis described, I mean, it showed a tremendous lack of judgment uh, by Fonnie Willis. But the reality is that it isn't going to impact, I think, the case going forward. And uh, no doubt Nathan Wade is going to be discharged and uh, things are going to proceed in Georgia. It's a state case. It has tremendous uh, impact and implications for Donald Trump. Um, and I think this is just an early bump in the road. And, uh, Brendan, do you see this as an early bump in the road uh, or for the Trump campaign? Is this something they're going to use to kind of focus away from some of the really underlying serious issues that this case and others show? Yeah, if, you know, the, the reporting from NBC News is that uh, the, the Trump campaign is going to try to muddy the waters here, that they are going to try to uh, confuse people and, and make all of these things run together, which has actually been a pretty successful strategy to this point. Now, um, we have had a number of, of court appearances by Donald Trump over the last year, and he is still cruised to the primary victory and it has polls showing him continually leading uh, Joe Biden. Now, once we get to actual uh, court cases where they are discussing the substance of the matter, I think things could be dramatically different. And that's why the pace of these cases matters quite a bit. All of these hearings and motions, you know, they're, they're confusing our own um, legal analysts. But once we get to the heart of the matter, and I think that January 6th cases are the ones that matter. Mar-a-Lago and documents, I think people have baked that in. Stormy Daniels, I think people have baked that in. But if we're forced to relive events and actions by Donald Trump as it relates to January 6th, I think that could be very, very powerful. Well, you know, the, the issue in Georgia, though, of the election interference about trying to find 11,000 votes and, uh, and also the fake electors and stuff, all of that, I think, is really just as important in many cases. But, Lonnie, you know, the primary is over. We're now in the general. Recent polling shows that when voters were asked who they would vote for if Trump is convicted, Biden pulls ahead. Could all of this hurt him in the general? Well, I mean, now we're just really talking about a question of timing. And uh, and really, if, if uh, the former president is able to run out the clock, if his legal team is able to run out the clock, uh, that, then I think that is the strategy that they're going to pursue. Already you see that really what they've been trying to do is to obfuscate and to, to create as much kind of noise around this all to make it seem like, look, this is all just stuff that's happening in the background. It's not that significant. Uh, and, and really the most impactful case, I think Brendan is right, is, is going to be the, the, the case in the District of Columbia with respect to, to what happened on January the 6th. But uh, a lot of this, I think, is really going to be perceived by the public as noise. And the idea that there will be a, a real impact will hinge indeed on the question of whether there is a decision, a disposition in any of these cases. And that's looking increasingly unlikely, quite frankly, given the court calendar and given everything that's got to happen between now and then. And, Brendan, do you think that all of this uh, activity, whether he is found uh, either guilty or not guilty in any of the cases, do you think this could have a, an impact on ballot, uh, on down ballot races for Republicans? It certainly could. And I think the impact is going to depend largely on what the Biden campaign does and what Democrats do. I think Nikki Haley learned the hard way that if you just um, hope people will watch this and be turned off by Donald Trump, you're going to be disappointed. The, the Biden campaign and, and the White House have struggled to figure out how can they really take advantage of this without looking like they are calling the shots and that it is political. Um, I think that is a, a risky bet to kind of sit back and, and, and hope that people will come to the right conclusions of this. I think they need to figure out some way to press their advantage here to talk about what potential chaos, what a potentially uh, uh, criminal we have here that could be president 
um, and cast shadow o over this. And, and yeah, anything that, that impacts the top of the ticket is going to have significant consequences on who, who controls Congress and therefore what kind of legislative agenda one of these people is going to be able to implement. And so, Donna, what advice would you have for the Biden campaign on how to handle this, what to say and what not to say about these kinds of issues? Well, you know, look, I do think it's important for the Biden campaign, as they have been, and President Biden really pointing out uh, the dangers to uh, to democracy, the challenges of having a uh, a president um, in place who is under uh, criminal investigation and perhaps conviction. And all of those things are fair game. Here's where I think the Trump campaign has a, a real problem, is that every day, just like yesterday, the headlines uh, for Donald Trump were all about legal cases, even as he wants to focus on issues. The headline for the Biden campaign was Vice President Harris visits an abortion clinic. Um, and so I think that the challenge for uh, the Biden campaign is going to be to keep issues front and center because there are a huge contrast with the former president, but also point to those elements of these uh, court cases around uh, democracy, election interference, um, and chaos that actually could be a danger and a threat to us uh, it, should Donald Trump be elected. I think that they can do both of those things. And Lonnie, on the other side, you know, you would think that it would be incumbent on Republicans to kind of talk about what Don was saying, the, the, the issues front and center. But in this particular time, Donald Trump and the Republican Party is one and the same. Yeah, I mean, he, here's what I think, you know, with, with respect to, to former President Trump, I mean, he's always used the courtroom as a platform. And, and the degree to which he's going to use that as a platform to talk about some of these issues that are relevant to the campaign, as, as Donna notes, uh, you know, th that's going to be interesting to see how he does that, because that's been their strategy all along. You know, he sort of gives these remarks every time he shows up for court. Some of them may be relevant to the case. More often than not, they're not relevant. I mean, I think one time he showed up and started talking about illegal immigration. So the basic point is that I, I do think Republicans and I think the former president have an intrinsic advantage with certain uh, independent constituencies, for example, when it comes to issues like the economy and immigration. The question is the degree to which the Trump campaign and other Republicans can focus on those issues where there may be an advantage, as opposed to talking about the legal issues, which, you know, frankly, I, I don't think advantages really anyone. I don't think it advantages Trump and I don't think it advantages Republicans. Brendan Buck, Lonnie Chen, and former Congresswoman Don Edwards, thank you so much for being with us this morning.